Welcome to NASA EDGE. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. We're here at NASA Langley with Jonathan Cruz, the Deputy Project Manager for CMLAS. And before we get started, I just wanted to let you know I'm initiating my media knot inspection of the CMLAS. So I'll go over and check out the, uh, the flight test article and everything else. If this is a flight test article, is it a flight yes, test? Yes, it is. Okay. Right. You've got to get my window article, we're straight. testing in flight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. See, that, well, that works perfectly. I'm going to look over, run it through its paces while you two guys get uh, more detail taken care of. Will that work? Sounds right, good well, to me. All right, we'll take care of him, Franklin, and I'll check this out here. Yeah, can you all keep an eye out on this guy? <laughs> hey, first, Jonathan, what is the Ares uh, 1X? Ares 1X is the first test flight of the Ares 1 rocket. The X stands for experimental, and the Ares 1 rocket is the successor to the space shuttle. How does this all work into the uh, test flight of the Ares 1X? Well, the Ares 1X is a 321 foot tall rocket, mm -hmm. and this huge hardware behind us is the little tiny pointy part at the top of it. Mm -hmm. The crew module is a simulator where the crew in the final vehicle would be riding, and the launch abort simulator is the launch abort system goes on top, and that would extract the crew if there were an emergency during launch from the vehicle. Uh, we are using these as mass simulators and shape simulators, and we have instrumentation through all of them to collect data during the flight. I was so noticing, looking inside, that the CM actually has a lot more space than I recognized. It's got some good solid material here. I think this might be perfect for my stowaway plan. What's this? Oh, oh. Plaster gun. Looks like it's from Moonraker. These are just pure simulators for their shape and for their mass. Okay, what kind of measurements or tests are you going to uh, receive from this, this, this test flight? Uh, we have almost 150 sensors located on both the launch abort system and the crew module. Okay. You can see the blue tape covering many of them to provide protection during the final fabrication and the shipping. Mm -hmm. And we'll be measuring all of the environmental uh, there are actually people in here. You can't see it, but they actually crawl along the inside, which is another good sign for me because it means that there's lots of extra space in here to store supplies of different kinds. So if I have to be trapped in here for maybe a week, uh, I got plenty of resources. This, this, this configuration of the CM LAS, is this the same configuration that's going to fly on the Ares rocket when it's actually ready to go? Shape-wise, it's very close. Mm -hmm. It is how it was designed two years ago when we started this project, mm -hmm. and the data from got this. this nice and sealed up. Absolutely nothing uh, is going to be in here as far as propellant's concerned, which is which is good to know. The data from this will be fed back into our analysis tools, and meanwhile, there has been ongoing design iterations, and the data we have here will give us confidence in those future ones. So, so the, the final craft will look very it similar to this, but perhaps not this. exactly like this. I How is this, this the... launch board system and crew module uh, simulator going to get to Kennedy? You, you can actually feel wind coming out of here, the, the air pressure. They must be cleaning something out. Well, we're here in the hangar at Langley right now, mm -hmm. and right out the back door here is the uh, Langley Air Force Base. Next Tuesday, we have these two trailers. We have a 70-foot trailer the launch support system's mm -hmm. on, and a 50-foot trailer we'll place the crew module on. Mm -hmm. Both of those will be towed across, placed on a Air Force C-5 Galaxy, very large aircraft, and flown down on a two-hour trip down to Kennedy Space Center, where it'll land at the shuttle landing facility. How is this going to be put on top of the Ares 1X rocket? Are you going to use the vehicle assembly building? Yes, we are. Vehicle assembly building is right within two miles of the shuttle landing facility. Mm -hmm. We tow the trailers into there, and these components will join up with the upper stage simulator that was built at Glenn Research Center, as well as the first stage that was uh, overseen by Marshall Space Flight Center and then avionics roll control system. Those will all be stacked up vertically to end up making this 321 foot tall rocket inside the, the vehicle assembly building. The data that you're going to receive from this test flight, how is that making a better crew module launch abort system that you will, I, I assume, do test flights for down the road? Some of the people who have done the initial research on this, done the wind tunnel tests and done other designs, they have requested sensors of particular type and particular placement on this. Mm -hmm. And so we have placed them where they, and worked with them to get it where they wanted them. Mm -hmm. And that data will be, will be uh, provided to them. They will check their analyses and use that, in, that knowledge in their 
future designs. Is there going to be any kind of test instruments loaded in there by the time it flies? Um, all the instrumentation we're using are, 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 are largely on the surface that mm -hmm. we see here. There are a couple that are measuring, for example, in the center acoustics, because mm -hmm. there's very large acoustic loads during launch. Mm -hmm. And um, the, all of the data recorders are actually further down in the vehicle. We have cabling that take all the signals from these sensors and carry it down to lower into the vehicle. The plans, so if you will, the genesis of the uh, uh, CM. Go with these documents. Interesting. See lots of space here. And you can put a flat screen TV over here. If you string a hammock right there, I'm thinking hammock because, uh, you know, I'll get that free fall dynamic going on. Well, this on. is launched. Are you going to be able to recover the CMLAS? What we're recovering is the data. Uh -huh. The crew module and launch abort system will remain attached to the upper stage, and that as a unit will continue on and splash down the Atlantic Ocean. And what you have to do is just take a few snapshots. Just uh, not that I'm saving these and anything like that. This is only for personal use. Perfect. Blair will be able to actually get a ride on the uh, Ares 1X. All right. Unless you want him to get a ride on the Ares 1X. <laughs> hey, uh, Blair, would you, would you like a ride on the Ares 1X? I just had some questions about that. Uh, it looks like uh, there's some room. You got a lot of space in there that I could maybe rig up some kind of like a, a hammock or something like that. Uh, actually, with some bungees. I was just looking over the plans. I think that might be possible. Would, uh, I was, you know, looking in here. It's a lot of open space. You know. Get me in there with a hammock, a thermos, and uh, I mean, a couple you, extra pillows. You really said. Could, uh, you said two minutes of fly time. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't even need to pack a lunch. <laughs> <laughs> never forget packing the lunch. That's always important, man. <laughs> never, never forget lunch. Okay. In fact, I wanted to go over those plans because I do think I could modify uh, the living space in there perfectly for someone of my stature. So hopefully that'll work. Jonathan, uh, it, it was great talking to you. And uh, we appreciate all your help and good luck on the uh, uh, upcoming launch. All right, well, thank you. Appreciate you coming. Yeah, right. let's, let's go over those plans and uh, we'll talk about it. So all right, let's take a look. See what we can get. <laughs> space over here and we got, it should work out perfectly. <laughs> this is NASA in.